welcome to this video on non-native SOLIDWORKS part editing with applications to CAM. My name is Robert French and I'm an applications engineer at Go Engineer. So uh, with a couple customer interactions recently, I've seen a need for this video of dealing with non-native SOLIDWORKS parts uh, in order to better facilitate other softwares and, and packages that need to deal with these parts. Uh, but in SOLIDWORKS, we don't have that feature tree, right? It's not a SOLIDWORKS part, so we don't have a, a list of sketches to easily modify and make changes. So we're going to go through a couple tools to modify a part without, you know, causing too much headache. All right, so when we're dealing with the non-native SOLIDWORKS parts, oftentimes we just need to remove or modify features. Uh, a couple of the commands that can help us with that are delete face and move face. And these are really just helping us uh, create better surfaces or, or perhaps simpler surfaces that our CAM softwares and other softwares can more easily interpret in order to uh, program our tool paths and so on. Also with these non-native parts, sometimes we're just looking to change a location or orientation of it relative to the SOLIDWORKS coordinate system. We can do that with move body and rotate body. And this helps facilitate uh, relocating coordinate systems like your G54 and things like that in CAM. I mean, that is possible in some of the CAM softwares, but uh, it might be more pragmatic or have advantages if it's done within the SOLIDWORKS file itself. Uh, and not only applications to CAM, but moving that coordinate system in SOLIDWORKS can provide better functionality perhaps in mating or in other uh, assembly files or other, other parts of the SOLIDWORKS software. So we'll take a look at all these tools in the software together. All right, here we are in SOLIDWORKS. We can tell uh, we have this non-native SOLIDWORKS part because if we look in the feature tree, we see that imported feature, right? We don't have any sketches or anything to edit. So something we hear typically from our CAM customers is that fillet features like these ones kind of running around the top edge of the part, uh, they are part of the part, but we need a more uh, intermediate state of the part where those don't exist so that we can program this top surface a little bit more cleanly or smoothly. So how do I get rid of that fillet edge when I don't see it in the feature tree? We'll use the delete face option. There's three different subtypes. Delete will just delete faces outright. Delete and fill will delete multiple adjacent faces and replace them with one continuous one. And then the option we're going to use, delete and patch. We'll delete a face, but extend the ones around it in order to kind of uh, fill in where that gap will be created and create a little bit more of a, a clean edge or, or simpler edge. So I'm gonna go in and choose all my fillet faces, four of them running around the top of this part. And when I complete the command, you can see that we extend all the other surfaces that are around them and create one new crisp clean edge. Now this is great for either resizing fillets or changing a fillet to a chamfer. So it has other applications, not just within CAM, but uh, can facilitate a lot of different, uh, or, or handle a lot of different problems. Additionally, sometimes parts come in undersized. We need to just do slight modifications to their size or, or shape. Uh, if we look at the bottom side of this part and this hole running through, we can see that hole's at an angle. So if I wanted to make this part taller, uh, or, in, or in essence make this, this hole longer, I could perhaps do a sketch on this bottom face and extrude it out, but that wouldn't maintain the orientation of this hole, right? We'd be going straight down at a slight angle. Uh, or a different angle than this hole. So we're going to use the move face command. And what that does is allows me to choose a face. And now I could either use my uh, parameter boxes on the left hand side in the property manager to type in a, a, you know, a very explicit value. Or I can use these drag arrows out here to just kind of show you the point, which is as I start to move this surface, as I start to make this part taller and taller, notice the relationship of the hole to the edge of the part, right? we're maintaining that angle, right? We're extending that hole and, and maintaining its design intent, its true definition. So that when I finally complete this command, I'm maintaining a lot of the original design intent of this part. All right, so other times for uh, CAM workflows or for other SOLIDWORKS functionality, we wanna be able to change the location of our origin or the orientation of our part relative to the uh, principal planes and axes of the SOLIDWORKS part file. Uh, we do have the full feature tree here now for this part, but going back and making some of those edits and changes can cause potential uh, issues downstream or down our feature tree. 
So what are quick, easy ways we can modify origin and orientation without disrupting those feature trees? We're going to use the move copy bodies command. I don't believe it's on the command manager by default. So just remember, we can always come up to the top right search bar. Just make sure we're set to commands. We type in what we're looking for, hit our search glass, and there's our command there. All right, so when we run move copy body, there's kind of two different uh, areas within it. We have the constraints area, which you're seeing here. That's using mates in the part environment to kind of position it. We're just going to go to the simple translate and rotate options. First, we choose what part we want to move or what body we want to move. In this case, it's the only body. Once it's chosen, we can just purely move it in X, Y, Z. If we look down at our coordinate system down here, we see the locations for X, Y, and Z. So perhaps I have a fixture or jig out on the floor that's you know 1.25 inches tall. I'll type that into Y. It'll move my part up, and I've quickly, safely relocated the origin relative to my part. Right, if I choose my origin now, I can see it's offset from this corner, that 1.25 inches. Great, sometimes we need to also rotate our part. Maybe we have a you know uh, angle on it that we have a uh, fixture or jig account for. So uh, cutting some unique angle with interpolation might be messy. Let's use a fixture or jig, orient our part so we can do some nice clean uh, two axis tool pass in order to clean it up. We're going to use move copy bodies one more time. And instead of working inside the translate options, let's jump to rotate. Uh, once again, choose the body that we want to rotate or uh, move. And then uh, we can do some uh, just kind of rotations about the X, Y, and Z axes, but that's going to be relative to where our origin is and might be hard to account for or, or uh, look ahead and see how you think it's going to behave. So one option I, I'm pretty fond of is using this what am I rotating about box. So that allows us to choose a you know axis or a sketch line or an existing part edge. I'll choose that existing part edge and now I only have one box because all I'm saying is rotate the part about that specific entity that I chose. So if there was a 15 degree angle uh, on this part and I had a jig to account for it, I can rotate it the 15 degrees, I hit check mark, so now not only is my origin right offset from that corner where it originally started, if I look at my principal planes, I'm oriented different to those as well. So this can help facilitate, right? Both of these tools can both uh, help facilitate where my G54 is, what orientation my part is in my machine. Uh, but, but this can also serve different functionality within SOLIDWORKS, right? We can now use these different planes and origin locations to uh, perhaps mate better in different ways that we couldn't before. Uh, that's all I have for you guys. Thanks for watching.